Our friends at Detroit Boxing Company are dedicated to providing high quality boxing apparel. With fighters and fight fans in mind, their designs are unique and stylish. With their hats, shirts, hoodies, jackets, they are going to make your jab cross hook look even more sexy. They have great classic t-shirts that feature some of boxing's biggest legends. Tommy Hearns, James Tooney, Jimmy Paul, and more. The people behind this company are simply wonderful in and they truly care about the boxing community. You have to check out their website at DetroitBoxingCompany.com and see the full catalog of all the great stuff they have available. Scoop up some fresh gear and just make sure you use the code word CoreyCast at checkout and you're going to save yourself a little bit of money. Check out their Instagram page at Detroit Boxing Company and hit that follow button. Just let them know that Corey sent you. My guest today is my friend Billy Thanel. We have been connected from Team Balance, Jiu Jitsu, and Smiling Tiger Muay Thai. Both of our schools are affiliates of one another, and we've always been tied together through our instructors. And it feels like we've trained time and time again, and we've been friends for years and years, but I've really never met Billy in person. I would love the opportunity to train with him down in Philly, but the chance to train with him comes few and far between. But we've always been friends on social media, commented, liked each other's stuff, and Billy's just a great dude. Not only is he a great martial artist, he's a fantastic dad, a great friend, a brilliant marketing brain up here in his noggin of his. Him and a few of his friends are pushing his new brand, Tatsu Tea, which is a matcha energy drink. And I know what you're thinking, matcha energy drink? That is kind of disgusting. But I had two of them and they are delicious. They honestly just taste like a tea. Doesn't even taste like a sweet energy drink. It's really delicious that you have to check them up. Tatsu Tea. They are a great company, great people working there. We are not sponsored by Tatsu Tea yet. Without further ado, here is my friend, Billy. Like my background, I brought, I, I sat in the Philly's office today. Oh, you're in the Phillies office? <laughs> Dang, dude. How far is that office from where you are in Philly? Are you closer to Fishtown? Um, no. Well, Fishtown's probably about uh, 35, 40 minutes. So I, I usually do like a Thursday with Phil uh, oh, down nice. there at that office. But um, uh, my office is actually in Bluebell, PA. Nice. So. That's cool. That's sweet. It's, it's really cool because we have like been – like Facebook friends, Instagram, social media friends for so long. We haven't had a chance to train yet. I know. Now, I know. It's crazy. I've trained with, with Chris and Kevin all the time, but I haven't got a chance to be with you yet. Yeah. Chris and I, we were just talking that we would want to, uh, we want to go down sometime and take a couple of guys down to train with you guys. Because oh, we, I would love that. It'd oh, be fun. Absolutely love that. Yeah. Road trip, right? Yeah, absolutely. How, how did you even get into martial arts? Um, are we on now or do you want to, we Oh yeah, we're good. Yeah, oh, we're good. All right. Um, it was real interesting. So years ago I went to, um, uh, I was actually out with guys from work and, um, I walked past, I, I didn't really feel like going out and drink, uh, drinking afterwards. <clears throat> I was walking past a restaurant. I saw a buddy of mine in a restaurant. This goes back probably 20 years ago. And he goes, come in, come in. So I come in and he goes, Billy, he goes, you kickbox, you know, you, you you know, you, uh, you've worked out before you've done some Muay Thai. He goes, I want to introduce you to Ricky. And it turned out that he was introducing me to Ricky Miglarese. Nice. Yeah. So Rick and I chatted and Rick's like, you know what? You got to come down, come down, uh, train down. Uh, at, at this time it was Samson street in Philly. Come on in. And, uh, I came down one day. Uh, I, my way, uh, my wife uh, said, you know what? You should really go down and train. You always want to do jujitsu. Why don't you go go down and train with those guys? And, of course, being a stand-up guy, you know, you're doing real fast. Yeah. Right? It means nothing when you're in that jujitsu realm. Right. You know, so uh, I got to meet Phil and Rick, and uh, Phil and I became friends. And I've been training with Balance 
probably a good 19, 20 years. Really? Wow, yeah. that's crazy. So kickboxing was first? Kickboxing was first, um, uh, first karate first, um, you know, uh, led into uh, kickboxing. I trained Muay Thai um, at one of the PAMA schools in Jersey. Well, that's cool. Uh, it was my, 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 my first introduction there. And then after that, I, I, I trained, uh, you know, a lot of kickboxing and stand up. Um, and then I moved over to uh, Jiu Jitsu realm where now we do both. Yeah. And, and it was interesting because through Jiu Jitsu, I got to meet Kevin. Mm-hmm. Uh, Arjun Kevin and um, and then train with him. So it was all a very tight, close network, you know, yeah. of all this all of us training together, which was great. I met Kevin at one of the first Matrix fights that uh, Balance put on. That's, That's really, cool. Kevin How and I really started to connect after that, um, you know, after Matrix fights. Yeah, that's cool. And that's it's funny. And I don't know if it's that case in your school, too, but in mine, it seems like you you have the stand-up guys and then you have the jujitsu guys and hardly does anybody intermingle. See, it's a little bit different at balance. So at at balance, a lot of um, it's jujitsu first and, um, and then they get an introduction and want to do some stand-up or if someone comes in for stand-up, they may not feel comfortable doing jujitsu. And then eventually it translates over to jujitsu, but they, they don't really stay separate They They usually um, intermingle between the two, which has been great. Okay. And, uh, and I've taught for Phil for a long time, um, trained under Kevin, uh, was lucky enough to get promoted under Kevin. Uh, Phil and I were, you know, promoted together. Um, and, um, you know, uh, and that whole lifestyle of Muay Thai and jujitsu together has been great for me. Yeah. Not only like on the mat, but also off the mat. Like when you're just, you know, training and, and, and running a business and the whole mindset of how we do things is as a, ref, you know, is basically as a result of doing hard stuff on the mat, right? Like how hard is jujitsu? How hard is like that crew test? How hard is, you know, your shorts tests and things like that? It's so difficult. And when you do that, it makes everything else easy, right? Yeah. Yeah. I tell, this is a lot, before I go into a listening appointment, I tell myself this line that I, there's two lines. I said, just yesterday I got punched in the head by <laughs> 10 different guys for five minute rounds. Right. Yeah. So if I could do that, I can walk in and help sell, help someone. Sell their house, right? <laughs> Nothing's worse than getting punched in the head. And then it's yeah. like Steve over in who's the, our black belt here at Taika. He's uh, like 250. The dude's, just yoked out of his mind and uh i rolled with him for five minutes and if i did that and survived and didn't get hurt yeah i tapped a bunch but hey i didn't get hurt so i can talk to somebody about listening their house there's no reason to be nervous about that exactly and and you know it's funny too because sometimes i'll be in a meeting and i you know weird things go through my head and if you're in front of a business professional that may come across as intimidating to some people not, not to us, right? You know, because you you always make that translation like you don't do what we do, right? You know, so when we, you know, we train really hard, we put ourselves in uncomfortable positions every day. You know, we're used to doing hard shit, right? That's yeah. what we do. And right. when you do that, it makes everything else easy. Whether you're going to school, whether you're going to work, no matter what it is, it just makes it, you know, more tolerable and a lot easier. Yeah, and especially when. It's like you put it on a grand scale of everything. You're like, I did 10 rounds and had 30 second breaks. I think I can talk to this man. About, exactly. About, you know, it's like, it's like you put it in that kind of terms. It's, it's easier. Did you think like martial arts helped your confidence overall? Yeah, it did. And you know what else? It, so it, it, I guess it starts with stand up. It started with jujitsu. And then it was always me like, challenge wanting to challenge myself so even talking with kevin and like his whole mind game philosophy like that's been very beneficial because i was always fascinated by the mental strength right so one of the things that was interesting to me is i was always told they can't teach heart right but i think in some strange way you can so over the past year i did a 75 hard challenge i, I don't, i'm not sure if you know what, what that is or no. not um, it was, it was, um, very interesting. So I used to split up my life where I would work really, really hard in, in the winter and then I'd have a great time in the summer. Yeah. And, um, 
So I, I read uh, this book and, and, and heard about this program called 75 Heart, and it wasn't about the physical side of it. It was about the mental side of it. And supposedly when you're done the 75 Heart Challenge, you're very, very mentally strong. So I'm like, I'm in. I'm going to see if I can do this. So it's basically two workouts a day. It has to be 45-minute workouts. One of the workouts has to be outdoors, and it has to be split up. So you, you can't uh, you know, just do them back to back. You got to make time within your within your schedule to, to get them done. Interesting. You need to drink a gallon of water during the day. You need to uh, eat a healthy diet. And now it doesn't need to be a specific diet because everybody's goals are different, but it needs to be a healthy diet. Like you know what's healthy, right? You know, like hey, I can't have this cookie. It's not healthy. Yeah. You know, I I, I, I can't, can't have these Twix bars. Cake. But I can eat like, you know, a, a normal healthy meal. And that's considered like your healthy diet. Uh, that's one of the other things. You got to read 10 pages of a nonfiction book. So they want you to learn something. So it um, doesn't necessarily need to be a motivational book, but it, it basically just needs to be a nonfiction type of book. So you're expanding your mind. Yeah. Um, uh, no alcohol. So no beers, no weekend beers, no, no drinking yeah. at all. And um, you take a profile pic. And the difficult part of it, and what was very interesting to me, is I had the workouts in. So there's always one thing that someone is good at, and there's always one thing that someone's like, oh, man, I ain't doing that. Like, I'll talk to certain people, and they're like, yo, I'm not giving up my wine, or I'm not giving up yeah. my weekend beers. Yeah. There's no way I can do it without the alcohol. I'll, I'll do another version, but without it. Well, yeah. that's why they call it 75 hard, right? You got to go yeah. 75 days of doing yeah. all of these things consecutively. And if you miss one of them, you start over at day one. Dang it. Right. So you got to be committed. So yeah. um, my wife and I did it together. And I remember there was a few things that stood out. And, and basically what it's training your mind to do is to do things that most people won't want to do. Right. Live a hard life. Be, make it difficult. Make it challenging. And it makes you more mentally strong. So, for example, like how many times like have you and I like we maybe we go to the gym and we train and we like say, you know, what, I want to train for an hour today. And maybe after like 50 minutes, you say, I'm good. I got a good sweat. I got some reps in. I train with, you know, this guy. I got some good roles in. And then you leave. Yeah. Well, once you do this program, you don't think like that anymore. You're like, I'm I'm taking the full I'm, if I'm committed to an hour, I'm training an hour. Yeah. If I'm committed to calling and meeting a professional and having a business meeting, I'm going to have that meeting. And then, you know, what? afterwards, maybe I'm going to try to schedule two or three more. Like it's always like never settling and it's never allowing yourself to shortchange yourself. And that's where I got from it, which was great. So that's that's really cool. Who who put this program together? Um, it's a it's a podcast. Uh, you, you can actually look it up on on Spotify. It's uh, Andy Frisella uh, does the podcast. It's it's an interesting program. Uh, he he lays it out. It's basically like um, you know training your mind to be to do things what most people won't want to do. And there was a lot of challenges along the way, which was super interesting for me. So for example, I had a meeting in Atlantic City for a trade show, and I woke up in the morning. I got my gallon of water. Um, I had to be there at nine o'clock. My wife and I got a run in. So we did a morning run, um, did three miles, 45 minutes. Cause it can't be 44 minutes has to be 45. 45 yep. So, uh, get home, get showered, jump in the car. I'm heading down to Atlantic city. And of course I'm drinking the water along the way and I'm stopping at every rest stop. Cause I got to go to the bathroom. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then I go in, I do the trade show. And in my head, I'm like, okay, I got my workout in. I, I, I do my reading as soon as I wake up. So I bang out my 10 pages. So I got that done and um, did the trade show the full day. And then I had to take the client out to dinner. Well, I still had one more workout I had to do. Yeah, so, outside, right? No, well, the, I had the morning workout where oh, I ran right. outside. Yeah. So that was good. So I had to be inside. So I'm in the hotel. Gym's closed. Gosh. What do I do? So I finished dinner. It's like 10 o'clock at night. The guy still wanted to hang out. And I says, you know what? I'll be back in an hour and then we'll, we'll go out. I'll go out with you. Um, I went out to my hotel room and did push-ups and sit-ups nonstop for like 45 minutes. But, <laughs> it's like, but if I didn't do it, I would have had to start over. And I was already like 50 days into it. You right. know? Yeah. So it's just, you know, and I went from 197 pounds down to 182.5. And you're probably like shredded. <laughs> I felt great. And that's yeah. the thing where they tell you, like, you take the profile pick every day. Right. So like when you look at your day one, you're like, well, I'm not in bad shape. But then when you look at day like 60 and 75, you're like, oh, my God, 
Like, yeah. but for me, it wasn't for the physical for, for some people it is, but for me, I just wanted to be able to say like, I could train, like I've already trained stand up. I've already trained jujitsu. I've already had some accomplishments in all those areas. Now I want to see if I could train myself mentally. Yeah. And how do you think you felt the first, I don't know, like the first week was it first tough week sucks. To do everything? <laughs> it sucks, right? Yeah. The first seven days were the hardest because your body is just not used to, well, one, the soreness aspect, which is why you drink the water. So the more water, uh, hear my Philly accent with the water. <laughs> water. <laughs> well, so the water, um, when you drink the water, it actually helps you not get sore. So like even the jujitsu workouts are always tough, but yeah. then you're getting the outdoor workout in, which is a combination of like, when I first started, I couldn't run three miles. I would go like 800 yards and then I'd walk 800, then I'd run 800, then I'd walk 800. I could stand up and do eight, nine, 10 rounds with you stand up, or I could roll on the mat for an hour, but I couldn't run. I, yeah. I hated running, but I sort of forced myself to do it. And it doesn't have to be running. Like you could be outdoor. The outdoor workout can be a hike. It can be a walk. It can be bicycle. It can be swinging kettlebells in the driveway. As long as you're outside in all the elements, no excuses. So if it snows, you still got to go. Oh, I, I did it. My friends, <laughs> my friends were pissed because I did it Memorial Day weekend to Labor Day. It's, ah. it's, it's like on around the 75 days. So all summer I'm hanging out at the beach and everybody's like crushing beers on the beach and surfing and having a good time. And I still was there, but I just wasn't drinking. Yeah. You know, and then I would stop and say, okay, guys, I got to go for a beach run. And they're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> so, so it was Come just, on, dude, like, throw us another beer, man. What do you exactly. mean? Running, dude? Yeah, exactly. So it was just, but that's what makes it hard. And then that that's what makes it so that it really helps you to develop your, your mental toughness. And did you feel like a change at the end of those 75 days mentally? Oh, man, totally. Like, I would, I would encourage you if you do it, if you want to try it to, I'll, I'll text you the podcast and, and listen to it. Cause he does a really good job of explaining, explaining it. But it, it, for me now it turned into a lifestyle. So like I, um, after you do the 75 days, then there's like a 30 day after and the 30 day after, because you're so used to doing it, you know, and, and there'll be times when we go out, like afterwards, my wife and I, we went out to brunch and I had pancakes for the first time in like 75 days. How did that yeah. take that first bite of pancake? I actually felt sick. Really? You know, I, I actually felt sick. And and we actually had some mimosas and we, you would have thought we were like, like total luscious. You yeah. Know, because like it hits you and you're like, but the weird thing about it is, is once you accomplish the 75 days and then you allow yourself to have like, that one day where you let go, there's this overwhelming feeling of guilt. Yeah. You know, because you're right. like, well, man, I'm used to doing this and I don't do this anymore. And I just did it. But then that at the same time, that's okay. But then we just jumped back into it like the next day and we just started yeah. doing our thing again. But when you do the 30 days after they add a few other things to it, they add uh, like cold showers to it. Oh, so yeah, more they add, they add a few more elements to it, which I did also. Dang. That's so, such a, that's such a bad ass thing to do because like I'm think I'm hearing you tell me this story and I'm like, oh, I don't want to swing kettlebells out right now. <laughs> In my house right now, it's 33 degrees out. And we just had a snowstorm yesterday. Yeah, oh, you got to go out and hike what it. What it is, but that's the thing, right? It makes you mentally tough. Mentally tough. Yeah, and and I'll be honest, like it was very beneficial for me to do it with my wife because there was a few times when work went wrong, uh, problems happen. Um, you know, you get home late. You know, you're like, oh, my God, I got until midnight to get this run and I don't feel like doing it. You know, screw it. I'll start over. No, she, my wife was like, you get your ass out there. We're going to finish this. I love that. You know? So like, but if if I was doing it by myself, it might have been more difficult, you know, but when yeah. you have somebody to do it with you, um, it definitely you hold each other accountable. Like there was a lot of days that she was like, I'm like, let's go. Come on. We're yeah. going. Yeah. You're like, let's go. Let's it's kind of it goes both ways, though. I bet you there were some days where you were her shoulder to lean on. Absolutely. And, and afterwards, from a business standpoint, like it really, it really helped my business because my whole mentality, like what translated to not settling in the gym or not compromising on a workout or making sure I drank every drop of that water. Like, Corey, I would literally hold up a gallon and shake it, and make sure no drops came out. Like, I would <laughs> have to, because if there was like a little bit left in the bottom, you start over. Yeah. Like, there's no, there's no compromise. Yeah. But, that same mentality translates over into your family life, makes you a better husband, makes you a better dad. 
It also makes you a better coworker and it makes you better goals like when you're setting goals. So like my business and work as a result of it increased significantly because I pushed myself the extra mile to add that extra account, to not settle, not to not be comfortable, you know, and to go and work hard. Um, and then I ended up getting more business. So it helped me in so many different areas, you know, um, which was that's, which was the best part about it. That's really cool. There's something to be said about guilt. You know what I mean? Like having that factor of like feeling kind of guilty that like you didn't finish your water or feeling guilty that you didn't because that can be a motivator. for a Absolutely. And there's nobody that's checking up on you. Right. So it's all on the honor system. Yep. And um, and the weird thing is, is when I started to do it and work and I would walk in with like a gallon of my Yeti, you know, and I'd be like, dude, what are you guys doing? Like, what are you <laughs> doing? And I'm like, I'm doing this thing. And people are like, I ain't doing that. I ain't doing that. But there was like one or two other sales guys I worked with that were like, I can do that. If Bill yeah. can do it, I can do it. Yeah. And a buddy of mine from the office did it. And he did it like he started it like halfway after I did. But we had a lot of like, you know, there was like holidays in between when we were doing it. Fourth of July, yeah. like there was a lot of different things. He was a little bit later, so he rolled over. There's You can always make an excuse, right? You can always be like, there's never a good time. Like, yeah. oh, Christmas is coming. I want to have wine at Christmas. Or, um, or I got to go to Vegas for this trip and I want to be able to have drinks. There's always an excuse. Always. You just got to do it. You know, you just got to, you know, just realize, hey, this is what I got to do yeah. and uh, and just get it done. So, yeah, for, for my training, that guilt is a reason why I stick around for the full hour and, and yeah. not at the 45 and, and bump out at the 45. Because also after we had Ashton, my training schedule, I went from training, you know, when you don't have a kid, it's selfish. You could do whatever you want when you want. Right. Yeah. I, could, I could train. I think I was training like five days a week before Ashton. Like it was something yep. crazy. And then Ashton came and then I went down to like two days a week. I'm actually training. So yep. like when I there, it shifted my thought because like if I didn't get my full hour of rolling in and other people are rolling, and I walk off this mat, I'm going to be home and feel guilty that I wasted the time that I had set aside for this. And that guilt yep. is a motivating factor for me. That inner it voice. Is. That's like, it is. Corey, you could have done more today. You could have done so much. That is such a motivating factor for me. <laughs> so, and jujitsu people in general, like I'm sure you know this too. Like if you slip up and they're like, my buddies will text me and go, my, my one buddy, Randy, who I train with, I teach at his school. He goes, uh, if, if I miss like three or four days, he'll send me a text going, yo, man, why'd you quit jujitsu? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'll be like, that's his way of saying, yo, I haven't yeah. seen you in a while. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, I teach for you on Monday nights, but he's not yeah. there Monday. He's like, yeah, but I'm here all the other nights. I'm not seeing you, buddy. Not Why are you, you not training anymore? <laughs> yeah. And he's like a 270 pound monster, black belt, yeah. you know? So yeah, it's yeah. like, you know, it's like, you know, like Chris Roach is super big and tough. Yeah. He's like, yeah. he's like him. You know, and that's funny. It's like, yeah, this is great, Randy. I want to, yeah, I'm going to come in and just get smashed by you. Yeah, right, right. That's so funny. Are right, you teaching right. both jujitsu and Muay Thai? I'm sorry? Are you teaching both jujitsu and Muay Thai? I am, yeah. So Monday nights I do a no-gi class for him, and then after I do a Muay Thai class. Nice. So, nice. Yeah. That's cool. Between the two of them, is there like a favorite you enjoy teaching more? I'm definitely more confident teaching Muay Thai. Yeah. Um, it, you know, it's interesting. It's like, you know, training jujitsu for long, you know, for so long. And, um, you know, this year I was blessed, you know, earning my black belt, uh, which was, which was great accomplishment. Yeah, congrats, dude. That's crazy. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I feel comfortable with Muay Thai only because I've been doing it for so long. I think seven, it has to be maybe seven years ago, Kevin tested me. So I've, I'm so fluent with that. I feel like certain yeah. nights, like, I could just do it in my with my eyes closed, and then you know. So, it, so I lean a little bit more towards more Thai than I do jujitsu. But I can yeah. tell you one thing about teaching jujitsu: it makes you better at jujitsu. Yeah, yeah. Same for Thai, dude. When you're teaching Muay Thai, you're getting better. Yeah, absolutely. There's something about verbally processing the moves and like, like you, like I feel like at this point, I I teach every Friday at Thai Kai. I've been doing it now since like 2014, 20. 13 almost 10 years now and yeah i could do it in my sleep yeah but when it comes to teaching jujitsu i feel like it's such a larger box and i always feel like 
I'm missing more finer details. My my confidence level when teaching jujitsu is not is not there Same. yet. Same. And 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 you know, and then there's so many different guys like you know, like when you train with like I I'm I'm lucky I get to train with Phil and you know all these like he's such a wizard and he has all the little small detail, yeah. Yeah. you know, which is is so important. And there are those details in Thai too. Like Kevin's excellent yeah. at that. Like he's he will teach you the one little thing that makes something so much better. Um, yeah. feels like that. So when you get around and you're fortunate enough to train with people like that, it just makes us better instructors and better yeah. students and better for our, um, cause I, I, get some students that come in that have a, you know, kickboxing or karate background. And it's like, <laughs> you know, it's not totally different, that, but yeah, it's like, we're, we're held at a higher standard. So we're able to share knowledge that they don't know. Like they're, they're they might be so used to just kicking and punching, but they don't know why they're kicking and punching. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a. You said Kevin Arjun Kevin giving us like little minor details or just things. That's literally my entire relationship with Kevin. Like yeah. <laughs> martial arts and business. It's always like him giving me some little detail that I should change and adjust. And I'm like wow that was a game changer for me <laughs> yeah, that was a game changer absolutely yeah it's those little things and kevin's awesome like uh, when i would be, be down at the jersey shore like him and donna would come down he actually surfed with us which was great we grabbed oh, yeah. surfboards we would go out you know so he I, I always loved when he came down but i remember when he told phil and i so phil and i were able to test the same time together and we actually oh, wow. tested at uh, rich comar school um which was uh, down at the Jersey Shore because I was down there. So I had said, well, is it going to be at the Fishtown School or actually at Samson uh, School, Samson Street in Philly or down at, he goes, no, we'll do it at the beach because Kevin was going to be at the beach anyway. I love that. So I said, okay, you know, and then I was stressing over it, man. That's like a big undertaking. And he goes, no, you're you testing. On the beach when it's all sand? That no, makes we, did it, um, we did it at the school, but um, oh, okay. I had to be at the beach at the time, but I was just stressed over taking that test. Yeah, yeah. You know, because it, right. it's like, do I have everything right? And yeah. um, and I, I did some privates with them, you know, in advance up into, you know, preparing, you know, for the test in advance. But I remember mentally, like, the stress, it was just draining, yeah. you know, yeah. it was just like just preparing for that. One you know? thing that always gave me uh, comfort was knowing that he wouldn't ask you if he didn't think you could already test, right? right. Like it's not in Sifu to be like, I want this guy to test just so he can fail and yes. learn a lesson. Like that's not, that's not his cup of tea. Yeah. So like and having the, the, the comfort and knowing that other people have faith in you and it's like, why don't you have faith in yourself, buddy? Exactly. Well, that's you know? a great, that's a great point because that's exactly how it was. Um, and I said, well, I don't feel like, I don't feel like I'm ready for this. And he says, why well, I, I said you are. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. You know? And on your test, you got all freaking nines and tens, I'm sure. Yeah. Like, well, the, the, the funny thing about the test for me was, so Phil knows me real well and how I, you know, even how I, uh, do did do stand up and uh phil said to me he goes uh because when we, when we did the rounds phil goes i'm going first and i'm like okay he goes i and, and i realized why he said this because he wanted to set the pace yeah. because he knew if i came out first i would come out like guns blazing yeah. and and I would run the risk of like blowing like, your load first 30 seconds. Load. yeah <laughs> like my wife calls it bees out of the hive Right. Yes. Yeah. Keep, yeah. keep the bees in the hive. So, um, and pace yourself and, and just <clears throat> still be intense. But so luckily Phil did go first and set the tone. So I sort of knew like, you know, like what to expect yeah. and so on, but I'll never forget afterwards. My leg was like the size of like multiple sausages. From yes. Punishment. <laughs> yes. No. Right. I feel you. I remember when I had tested, I, uh, I was, tired in the second round and my my leg my to shield the kick wasn't getting up high enough and he kept finding the pocket in between my yes. elbow and my knee and i got kicked in the ribs so many goddamn times the next time i woke up i had this bruise on my ribs luckily nothing was cracked but it was just the smacking over and over, over and, and over again over. <laughs> he, over. he threw he over. threw a backhand at me which i have a picture where the tie pad just missed my nose by like Ooh. a centimeter 
you know? Oof. And it was just like, oh, I'm thankful that just didn't slice my nose wide open. Yeah, yeah right. Man, it it's, it's, it's it's a lot of like testing is is a lot of fun, but it got damn is it so nerve wracking. I, I tested in front of Ajahn Chai at uh, Steve Grun School in State PA. Yep. And it was the most intimidating thing. Like Taika, we don't have a boxing ring. At Steve's school, he does. He's good. So we did it in a boxing ring, which I'm not like totally com- comfortable with. Right. It was at the end of a seminar. So you got like 40 people watching you test outside the ring. And I remember him asking th- the worst part about my test was him saying, so I need you to throw a spinning back elbow. So I, I turn, I hit the elbow and I reset and he goes, yes. wrong. So I need you to do it again. And I'm like, <laughs> Oh my God, I did what? What do you mean? So I, I, I hit it again. And he's like, so who is your teacher? And he knows Sifu is standing in my corner. He knows yes. who my teacher. I'm like, uh, yes. Ajahn Kevin is my teacher. So suppose you don't know how to do the spinning back elbow. He's going to do 100 push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> you, gotta, you tell him how to do a spinning back elbow, please, so you don't do the push-ups. <laughs> did, he have, did he want you to yeah, push? I had to spin all the way around and frame yeah. out, and I yes. totally forgot that detail. And I was just like – no <laughs> kevin was like don't worry it happened everybody messes up on on something but just the overwhelming pressure is yes. hard and i've never been in a position especially like that all eyes on me and the pressure just coming down on me as he's like like physically going like <sighs> i know you <laughs> yeah yeah hiding his hand, his face i'm like no <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I um, it's funny. I, that's something that I definitely. Uh, I mean, I, I just remember the anticipation and just the, you know, leading up to that was just completely like, yeah. you know. But you you get through it and you push through it. And I was fortunate that um, I got to do it with Phil, which was sort of like an honor for me. Yeah, how cool you is know? that? You know, yeah, it was super cool. You know, so Dude, I I got to train with Phil for the first time. My wife and I. Uh, last October, we went down to Philly because I've never been and I've wanted to explore that place forever. Uh, and uh, we were there for the weekend. I trained and did his Thai class on Friday. Oh, nice. And, yeah. Oh, uh, so cool. I just love I love being able to take his Thai class and get like a whole different perspective on and Phil because the videos I see, he's always doing jujitsu. So it was cool to be like, here's his Thai class. Yeah. And he do, he's very unorthodox. Like a lot of the stuff that he does is just a little bit different. Uh, yeah. He does uh, some crazy foot positioning. His footwork's different. It's very, very good. And he stands a specific way that throws people off. Yeah. So um, he, he does some really, really cool stuff. It's really cool that I love the fact that you mix your stand up and your ground game together is now that you've gotten uh, essentially a black belt in both of them, how do you like continually stay invested in martial arts? Like, how do you not lose your interest? Um, you know what? It's constant learning and and what it is. And, and in a weird way, like you, there's students under you that depend on you. And then there's training partners that depend on you. And we always got to keep getting better. <clears throat> and that's where that, that, that mental side really, because if you ask me about jujitsu, I, I just still feel like, wow, there's still so much more to learn. I know. Like we have certain techniques that even as a purple belt and up, like there, there are certain techniques. I think that I felt like we, you tell me if I'm wrong, like there's a technique that you might be able to perform in jujitsu that you might be able to do at black belt level, but at a high level, um, uh, you know, as even as a black belt, there are some techniques that I still am like a white belt or a blue belt at. Yeah, man. Yeah. Check my uh, spider guard. And yep. uh, anything with sleeve and uh, and collar grips, I'm I'm so terrible at. I could maybe like demonstrate it, yep. but I but I never hit that stuff live for me. Yeah, exactly. And and those are the types that I things I do now. So what I try to do is I try not to go to my game. So I, I was like, okay, I'm very good at um, you know a guillotine, but I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to try something completely different. And that's how I sort of keep it interesting for myself. Interesting. That's cool. Try to do something completely different, stay out of your comfort zone. I don't care if I get tapped. I just try to do stuff that's just completely different than what I'm used to. Yeah. Yeah. And most of my game until really recently has been like, 
I've tried to keep my jujitsu correlation to no gi. So like a lot of my chokes don't rely on like the, the collar and lapel. And lately I'm just like, let's just start messing with the lapel and just see what happens when I grab collar. Uh, if I grab sleeve, like just like, just start messing with this stuff because it's something that I freaking never do just exactly. because I'm like not comfortable with it. Yep, exactly. And that's exactly what I try to do. Like my foot lock game is, it, it needs work. It, it's just not on a level with some other people. So I'm like, okay, I got to focus on knee bars and foot locks and heel hooks now, because it's just like, you know, it's just something different. I never, I always stay, I always was like, oh, well, that's like a uh, type of jujitsu. That's just, you know, I just wasn't used to, I'm always so familiar with something different. So now it's like, okay, this is the part of the game I got to focus on now. And you're kind of just breaking yourself out of your comfort zone, trying yeah. something that's not your go-to move, essentially. Totally, totally. And and the cool thing about jujitsu is, and you probably get this with real estate and everything else is, like, there's so many different people on the mat. Like, you don't know whether you're with a doctor or a yeah. realtor or a teacher or, you know. Or an ex-con. Yeah, or an ex-con, right. exactly. Yeah. It's or like that crazy treatment, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, he's per like, you just don't know. But the beauty of that is um, the networking. Like mm -hmm. we all are super tight because of this fraternity and this brotherhood together, right? And um, you build this strong network, you know, of uh, with people like Phil and I. Um, not only do we train together, but we also um, have have networked together. He owns a digital marketing company. Um, he's pulled me in for uh, like my 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 core business is is the packaging and marketing. Phil does digital marketing. So his clients sort of run over with my clients and my clients run over with his clients. So we were cool. even through COVID, we were able to sort of network our relationships together and work together. And it was just a better way of um, just working with not only a friend, but just being able to establish a referral base of business because of our network. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Then that's exactly like last year. Uh, I was just telling Ken in January, I was like, Hey, little known, unknown fact that half of my business in 2022 came from Tai Kai. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, how oh, that's I awesome. That? I love it. You know, it's cool. It's like, you get to meet new people. And I just love the fact I cannot, uh, like, I can't put into words how much I love the fact that it's a melting pot of different people. It's not just like you are joining, uh, I don't know, like a, a sewing club and it's one type of person in jujitsu. It's like you could roll with a stoner and then roll with a police officer yep. and then roll with uh, a corporate high, high up the ladder dude. And then your next role, you're rolling with a 16 year old kid, you know, like it's like yep. the, the changes in people and personality is, Unlike anything I've seen in other hobbies, other than like Muay Thai is the same too, you know, like exactly Muay Thai is the same. It's interesting for me because my son is 15 now. So he's, he's, he's up there and he for years has seen me train and I would bring him, but I never forced it. Right. So I would say there, on the days he says, yeah, I want to come with you. He comes on the days he doesn't want to come. He doesn't. And now that he's a sophomore in high school, he he sees my network he's trained under kevin he's been ranked green under kevin like he's done different things and he trains muay thai he trains jujitsu um so but he went out for the wrestling team this year and um had nothing to do with me you know yeah. he did it on his own started going to the gym every morning with the football players started working out it was his first year wrestling and and loved it you know yeah. and this was but but i always told him i said just because I know Arjun Kevin and I earned this rank and I've gotten ranks under Phil. Doesn't mean you can ride my coattails. You you have to do this on your own. This is your journey. Yeah. You no. Know? And that was been great for him seeing people like Kevin, having Kevin stay at the house, having Phil train, Phil come over. Um, you, you know, Jake, my, my son Jake got to grow up around, you know, those influences. My buddy Randy, my buddy Eddie, and 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 see, you know, these guys around and then train. And I think about that all the time, like, man, that would have been so cool if I got to like grow up like that. Cause you yeah. imagine starting at 15, 14, yeah. 13 years yeah. old, yeah. you know, being around. I'll tell you what, Bill, when I was 14, 15 years old, I didn't give a shit about any of this. I just <laughs> wanted to go home, play video games, and right. 
like stay in my room all day. I, I, I yeah. give a lot of props to those kids that are like all in on, on yeah. those sports. Yeah, it's, it's super cool watching it. Now he's doing it. So, and, and, and now, of course, you know, we go to roll. He wants a piece of me. And, yeah, and, yeah, right. <laughs> well, that's, that's the thing is like now that we have Ashton and like Brittany and I are like learning all of these different like conversations we're going to have to have in the future with them that you never like think about is like um, one of our uh, Dennis, Dennis Seger. We, I was talking to him the other day about uh, cell phones. I was like, how did you know when it was the right time to – get a cell phone for grace and sophie and then like we didn't think about that conversation and then we're talking about like what if he wants to get into jiu-jitsu or dance my wife teaches tumbling and dance and gymnastics and it's like it's i don't want to be that parent that forces him to do yep. stuff so you kind of just like let him like pick his interests and if he doesn't like it you just kind of pull him from it right you don't really commit him to it absolutely but the best advice i'll give you um and what I've seen happen from it is I never wanted to force it. Right. Because then he yeah. resents you for it. But if you lead by example, they start to want to be like you. Right. Mm -hmm. So like Jake wanted to test and tie because he would see Kevin come down. He would see me do seminars. He would see me teach. He would come to my classes and then he would want to do it. Same with jujitsu. He would want to do it. Um, uh, you know, it, it was very interesting where, if you sort of like lead the path, even the 75 hard path, he was wrestling at the time. He did 75 hard with my wife and I. Really? Yeah. But, oh, he, but he he screwed up and he he didn't make it through. He had some you know, mishaps and stuff like that with scheduling and stuff. But I, I think he'll do it again. But by just seeing us do it, he wanted to do it. So um, it's sort of like you don't force it. But if you lead and you show the way, they may follow. You know, yeah. and that's sort of the best advice I can give you on that. Yeah. Cause it's, it, that's tough, especially when you have kids. It's just, I don't know, you know, it's like you, when you have kids, you're like excited to go through all these moments and they're like, Oh my God, I gotta have that conversation with them about phones. Yeah. When is a good time for a phone? I don't know that. When is a, when do we start getting them into different activities? How do we do, you know, it's like all these intricate conversations that I didn't, uh, didn't and, then think. Gets, and, then, and then there's other contributing factors too. Like when they get into school, like how do you protect them? You know, yeah. like, Right. Yeah, like my daughter was different than my son. My son loves school and like is heavily involved where my daughter is really excelling uh, in college. She's actually in college now. Um, she's doing amazing in, in Florida. And, but she wasn't a big fan in high school because I, I think as a, I don't know, maybe as a girl, it's different, but just the level of bullying and the level of that whole clickiness yeah. is a whole other thing. Cause as a parent, you want to like protect your kids, but Right. You know, you put them in a situation and, you know, some things you can't control. So they, they have to figure that out. So that's a whole nother thing. I know. So, right. Yeah. yeah. And then, it's, like you said, when you introduce the cell phones and this kid has right. a cell phone, I don't have a cell phone. Now I, yeah. you know, it's, you know, it's that kind of thing. So, yeah, it's a, uh, I love they said lead by example. Cause that's, I think that's ultimately what Bernie and I will, will do and will continue to do is just show him, uh, do you want to start wrestling? Yeah, sure. Whatever. We'll get you. Into you want to start yeah. painting? All right, sure. Let's learn how to paint. I guess. Let's just Absolutely. kind of give yeah, you the opportunity to try. see her training. You know. You know, and he'll you know want to follow along. You know, most of the time. Yeah, that's it's really cool. It's just conversations you don't totally plan on thinking about when when you have kids. You know, um, and I, I wanted to go back to you had said that your business is like the print marketing aspect which is like another good reason why we wanted to talk is because you have this new tea that you launched right was Absolutely. how do you say the name because i don't want to mess it up um so actually i brought can i i have some coming to you but it's um, it's called tatsu tea i love that so um a buddy of ours is a dietitian and um with a nutrition and nutritionist and dietitian and he used to travel back and forth to japan all the time and in going back and forth to Japan, um, yeah, there, there we are with Phil. And so it, it, it's Phil Miglaris, it's Ricky, uh, it's, it's, it's my buddy Todd and his wife. And um, I did all the packaging and the designing for the can. Um, we have a, a good team of people, uh, you know, our buddy Mike, uh, we, we, we've worked hard on developing it. But what it is, is it's basically like an energy drink or an energy tea. Um, which is good for hydration, energy, immunity, and focus. 
and it doesn't have all of the sugar of traditional energy drinks. Um, so it's a little bit different. But my buddy Todd used to go back and forth to Japan all the time. And when he would party, uh, when he would train in Japan, the Japanese would want you to uh, to entertain you and to have and to party with you. So all the guys that were training over in Japan were, were extremely hungover. Yeah. So being a dietitian and everything, he Googles, you know, different um, remedies and they say, you know, what is good for a hangover? Well, electrolytes are good for a hangover, vitamin C, you have the jet lag issues, you know, he had all these things. So he started to experiment with matcha tea and creating an energy mm -hmm. to, to handle the, the jet lag um, to also have the electrolytes in it to handle when he would go out and you know, and, and yeah. need something for a hangover or just yeah. the, the jet lag and the travel in general um, and the immunity of traveling. So he had all these added the vitamin C and basically created this formulation, which was like the perfect, clean and natural energy drink. So it was first in a stick pack and then we ended up getting it, you know, into cans. We worked hard on, you know, creating a formulation for the cans, yeah. they get ready to drink. And uh, Phil was involved. We've probably been working on this for, for about two to three years, but I, I did all the, the marketing and the design and the packaging. And those guys have all their strengths. Phil with his digital marketing, Ricky with his uh, with the, with the uh, influencer and, and, and the training. And the interesting thing about it was, you know, and, and I'm sort of the same way as those guys. You don't want to put your name behind something you don't believe in. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. So uh, and, and, and there's so much out there where you. You know, so when we, we, we really looked and dove into the ingredients and and I never forget when Ricky and Phil tried it the first time, Phil called me right away. And I, I had happened to try some of the formulas first when they had gone back and forth through that process. And he asked me, he goes, would you finish the can? And uh, how does it taste? You know, and what's in it? And, how, you know, I need to try. And this was all along a two year process of making sure that it was right. Because, you know, it's funny when when you just showed that video clip, but Phil and I, we did uh, went down and did this product search live with all the, the team members. And during that time, you know, one of the things that Phil said is this is something that I would put in my body. So for him to say that yeah. he, he really did a deep dive into this to make sure that it was healthy, to make sure that it was natural, to make sure that, you know, you're not loading your body up with, you know, chemicals right. from other, you know, other energy type drinks. And then on top of it, it tastes different. It tastes really good and it's refreshing. Yeah. So like I'll see my wife drinking it or I'll see other people drinking it. I bring it into the office. We have it here in the office. And then we just started the launch probably about a week, week and a half ago. That's so, cool. Uh, definitely and something to be proud of. Great for recovery. Great for pre-workout. Yeah, I love I love the idea of a tea rather than like an ener a sugared up energy drink. I know like the zero sugar is hot right now, like ghost drinks. And, yep. Uh, I think C C4 is also sugar free. Yeah, C4 Monster. I mean, I drank them all, to be honest with you. And yeah. I used to drink the ones that were sugar free. And um, but I would still get that crash afterwards. Whereas yeah. uh, what's very interesting about the matcha is we, we say it's fueled by matcha. So when you drink it, there's only 55 grams of caffeine but it's a sustained release. So like what I'll do is in the afternoon around two o'clock, usually when I'm tired and ready to take a nap, like after lunch, yeah. like I'll crack one of those. And then all of a sudden I become super productive, very, very focused. I get done what I need to get done. And then that energy is still sustained so that when I leave work and then I go train, I still feel good on the mat. And then afterwards it has all this, you know, electrolytes in it. So um, I have the hydration side of it, so I'm not cramping. Like we have some guys that are so used to cramping from jujitsu, they don't get cramps anymore. Um, wow. And there's just like a lot of other great benefits from it. Yeah. So um, it's been it's been a great home run, and we're actually having the Tatsu Tea Challenge. Okay. You know, it's going to be a fun little thing on Instagram where people make reels about funny videos, and uh, they could win product, and then they can get private lessons from Phil and Rick. Heck so, yeah. Yeah. Dude, so, I, want, I want a reason to drive down to Philadelphia. Just get a yeah, well, I, I got some coming your way. I think it's going to yeah. be there tomorrow. So I, I all right. I'm going to save some just so I can think of a really <laughs> funny reel to, to yeah, do. Yeah, a funny reel, tag in Tatsu T. Yeah. yeah. I love it's, that. But it's when you, you went into it from designing like the can and the logo and stuff. Correct. Yeah. Nice. So there was, um, yeah, it, it was interesting for me. I, 
my background is in, in packaging and branding. Um, the company that I work for, Stephen Gould, where we specialize in that. And um, I, I worked with, uh, I took a look at the copy. I took a look at what was in the product. And then I worked with my design team, taking little bits and pieces of things that they had, like the dragon and, um, you know, the logo and just trying to make it into a, a brand. So for me, in my line of work, sometimes we do something that complements an existing brand, but to have an opportunity to create something completely from scratch is awesome. Yeah. You know, so that was the best part about it for me. It was, uh, you know, like I said, it was a two year journey, but trying to come up with cool design for the cans, trying to make sure the product tasted good, working with his team uh, and then make it so that uh, people would see it on the shelf and want to pick it up and see what's on it. That was the ultimate goal in, in my area of expertise. But uh, the beauty of it is, is everybody sort of had all the elements of our team um, has everybody as a specialty. So, um, you know, the dietitian side of it, we, we have a, a, an attorney who specializes uh, from the legal side of it. You know, Phil and Rick with their expect, uh, uh, specialties in jujitsu and the digital marketing and <clears throat> all of that that complements it. Um, it. It was a great team where everybody put everything together to finally come up with this, you know, this cool brand that that works real well. Yeah, that's I've always wondered how people just like up and start a like that just seems so involved. Like, how do you even find someone who could bottle it and make it on a mass level? Yeah. That's got to be difficult, too, right? Exactly. And then making sure you're aligned with the right partner so that if it was to blow up and now you need to make millions, it does you have the capacity to be able to fill it. You know, and a lot of these other contributing factors. What about supply chain? Like where it was unique for us is we, um, my company, we have a strong supply chain uh, where we have the ability to have the cans on hand, um, the wraps for the cans, the, you know, the logos, the design team. Uh, so we have all of these um, components that put together that complement, you know, uh, Phil's team and Todd's team and, and, and having, you uh, us as a resource to support their line of business. Like that's really where my strengths lie. So, um, and it makes it interesting. Uh, and it starts with, um, you know, a, a liquid in a jar or a stick pack that you mix. And then you yeah. say, well, how do I take this stick pack and put it in a can? So everything needs to be completely reformulated and then make it so that it's ready to drink. And then the first samples we tasted, like you would like spit across the room. They tasted so bad. Yeah. You know, yeah. Right. Like, Make it so that, hey, this tastes good. This is something that I'm going to want to finish. This is something that tastes good. This is something that catches my attention and tells a story and then is healthy, you know, and, you know, will complement my goals. Well, will, you know, make me so that I'm not tired at work. If you're traveling and, you, you know, you need to pick me up, it's there. If you want to put something in your body that's healthier, you know, so all of these things come into play in multiple stages. And then finally, we got it like, right across the finish line. And I'll never forget when I called Phil, we had just a can, we had no logo, we had just a formula. And my my buddy Todd says, I think I got it. And uh, we went down to Fishtown and sat down and I handed Phil a can and he opened it. We all tasted it together for the first time. We, this is it. This is it. This is it. This is it. So you were a part of the trial and error test too while it's being made. Yeah, I mean, because I, I because I'm friends with those guys, and and that was you know Todd's niche, and and, and figuring out, I was like the test dummy, like, hey, what do you think of this, you know, yeah. and uh, and I was able to do the packaging, and I really needed to have an idea of, hey, what is this brand all about when I'm putting together, you know, the um, the branding guidelines for it, you know, what this is going to look like, really understanding like what ingredients are in it. So um, just being involved in that whole process helped me to do my job better by helping them to develop that branding. It seems like, are you dealing with clients that have an already finished product and need you to package and ship it? Or is it mostly clients that are like, hey, I'm in the beta testing of this right now. Yeah, uh, could you help? That's a great question because uh, it's a balance, right? Like anything else. So I have clients that are very, very well established already. Uh, Multi-million dollar clients that just need me to maybe package or repackage something that's existing. And it might only be for one of their product lines um, or it may be a repack or it may be something that's uh, fulfilled or kitted. So it might only be a very small fraction of their business. 
The startup world is different because the startup world, there's so many failures in that realm. You don't know who's right. going to make it and who's not going to make it. Right. So um, it's having sort of a balanced portfolio where you're servicing all of those different type of customers. So, you know, you can, you know, basically, you know, have a stronger book of business, so to speak. But um, I don't take on too many startups, but with this particular one, just seeing, you know, the legs that it had on it and believing in the product and knowing the team, like, like Phil and being guys, a part of it from the start too. Yeah. I mean, these guys, they don't lose. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's, and that was sort of like a, the best way for me to sort of rationalize it in my head is like, I'm with a team that wins and, and for them to allow me to be able to do the branding on it that way was sort of an honor. And then it gave me an opportunity to flex a little bit and to show what my capabilities were. But it was such a great group of, of individuals that were involved in putting this whole thing together that it was, I, I believed in the team before I believed in the product. And then when I tried the product, I'm like, wow, man, this is good. So yeah. we do get a lot of calls for a lot of startups and I'll, I'll help a lot of people in some ways, but this particular one was sort of special to me. Yeah, especially being involved from the jump and also the people that were involved too. Absolutely. The relationship with them too. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, is it your your next job to get it across stores or is that for somebody else's? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, my, my base of business is really, um, you know, the, uh, the branding of it. Uh, I mean, we do have distribution warehouses, so we can support that. But... Um, Right now, it's basically e-commerce driven, so it's uh, yes. buying it online. But they're starting to add it to brick and mortar in Philly first. Oh, so okay. some of the Allen schools might be carrying it. There's going to be some uh, nutrition and supplement stores that they're going to be adding on. Maybe some college universities are going to start carrying it. So we're going to start seeing it um, appear in brick and mortar a little bit more geographically, and then they'll expand from there. But um, anybody can get it online right now um, and then have it delivered. Nice. That's really cool, man. How, how awesome is that? I love, I love that you guys were able to get this like rolling from just powder packs, right? Just like mix and shake into your water bottle, right? That's how it started. And, and, it, and I liked it that way, but it was very, um, matcha in general and, and what I've learned from it along this, this journey from you know, like my, my, my friend Todd and so on. It, it, it's very earthy and it's very strong. And a lot of times it needs to be uh, uh, a sweetener needs to be added or a sugar needs to be added just to take the bitterness of the matcha out. So there's not a lot of people that like matcha, but when you go into a Dunkin' Donuts or a Wawa, they mask the matcha with a ton of sugar. Mm -hmm. We were able to do it so that you could taste this. It doesn't have that matcha earthy, harsh taste to it. Still has the benefits of the, of the energy and the fueling of it, but tastes like sort of like a refreshing iced tea that you would have in the summer. So um, it, it's 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 not a heavy sugary sweet you know type of energy drink. It's more like drinking you know your mom's iced tea on the back deck. Is really a good way for me to sort of describe it. It's wow. very refreshing. It's very um, you know it has a good taste to it, and it's not loaded up with a bunch of garbage. Nice. I'm. I'm excited to give this thing a try. I'll do a the intro to this episode. I'll do like a taste test. Yeah, that would be awesome, man. And be yeah. honest too. I, I want um, like I've gotten a lot of great feedback, um, you know. But I, I more importantly, like I appreciate people's honesty because then it helps us be better, right? If everybody says, "Oh, it's the greatest thing ever, greatest thing ever," and we don't get any real feedback, then you can never really become great. So we welcome you know all types of feedback on it, but. We and that brings it back full circle, right? Because that's like martial arts. If everybody's telling you, you look great, everything's perfect, you're never going to get better, right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and, and so far, it's been very positive. Um, you know, something we're super proud of and uh, and something that we don't mind putting in our body because it's, uh, it, you know, it's good for you as well. Yeah, that's awesome. Dude, this is so cool. I appreciate you, you took a whole hour out of your day just to shoot the shit with me, catch up and find uh, I, I, I'm honored. I'm honored. You asked me, man. I appreciate it. I, I know we were trying to get some scheduling and I had this, you know, I had this in the back of my mind. So I wanted <laughs> something to talk to you about. Yeah. Uh, so I could, you know, I, but I appreciate the, uh, the outlet and I think what you're doing is awesome. Oh, thanks, man. I like, uh, a, I like talking to people and learning about their passions and hobbies and B it also is like, um, 
it's a nice way to give people a platform to talk about stuff that they give a shit about without it being all about hot political action and hot button takes. And I don't care about that. Just tell me, Bill, what you're passionate about, why you're passionate, because I think the very baseline will correlate with anybody's hobbies. If you want to be a good sewer, you need you need to practice. If you want to be a good martial artist, you need to practice. Like all of these things kind of hold true. And uh, just gives me a good reason to be like, Bill, let's talk for an hour and just yep. catch up. Huh? Absolutely. <laughs> and, and, and you know, with the whole poly, I, I try not to go down that rabbit hole because it can always be so negative. But what I always tell people, and I even tell my wife, because sometimes she'll watch something and get all fired up on television. And I'll say the best thing that we can do is to take care of what's under our roof. Yeah. Right? Because if you take care of your own family and you do the right thing, imagine if everybody did that, yep. right? Then we wouldn't have like half of these issues. So I know, yeah, yeah. Amen. You know. Amen. So, so that's sort of how I look at it. But um, yeah, take care of what's under your roof, do the right thing, and everything else will fall into place. Well, hopefully you'll see me soon when I win this contest and I yes, do yeah. a free private lesson from Phil and Ricky. Because I will <laughs> bet your ass I will be down there for that. Dude, I can't lesson. wait to see what you do with it. I mean, <laughs> listen, you have, you know, I, I'm I'm excited, you know. I got a scheme. I got to think of something. Yeah. I'll, I'll think of something good. When when does the contest run? It actually, um, they're going to be announcing it today. So um, it's oh, they're be announcing it today. Yeah, okay. it's going to run this. the month, month of March. He may have already done it. I haven't checked, but Phil said he was going to announce it today. Okay, so this this episode probably won't air actually until April. So no big deal. By this time the podcast airs, we all would have known that I we'll know who the winner it. is. <laughs> but it'll be ongoing, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and listen, Corey, I would love anytime you come down, just you know, reach out to me, let me know. You know, we'll yeah. go eat, we'll go train, you know, we'd yeah. love to have you down. Maybe oh, even do yeah. like a little mini seminar if you ever want, you know, let me know. Yeah. Would love Dude. that. I would be uh, I would be honored to do a seminar down there. Give me a reason to go down and see you guys and bring some of my guys with me too. Yeah, that would be, great. be down too. Very much appreciate it, my friend. Yes, likewise, man. I'll talk to you very soon. Absolutely. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Corey Cast. I really appreciate the time that you spent listening and even listening to the full episode to get you to this point. I just want to say I'm just so appreciative and so thankful that I have so much love and support for these episodes. If you want to be a guest on this podcast, reach out to me. I'm always looking for new people. Let's talk about what you're passionate about. Let's talk about your hobbies. Let's give you a positive platform to talk about the things that matter to you. Do me a favor. Make sure you hit subscribe, like, follow, leave a review of the podcast. All those little things will help this podcast grow because without you guys, there is no podcast. And I am just so grateful that you're taking the time to listen to it today. Thank you so much.